Hi everybody, Dan Oman here talking about the pick five, the jackpot pick five at Asinoboya Downs on Monday evening. It's mandatory payout Monday at the Downs. The carryover going into Monday's card is over $515,000. The pick five, a 20 cent base wager, will comprise races four through eight at the Downs on Monday. In this video preview, I'm not going to give out a ticket because... We're pre-program changes, pre-scratches, pre-track conditions, but I do want to give out a few horses in each race that you might want to consider in your multiple race wager. The jackpot pick five, $515,000 carryover, 20 cent base wager, races four through eight. Let's fill up the field for race number four, the first leg of the guaranteed pick five. One mile, optional claimer, $15,000, the optional claiming price. And I do think the number five looks very very logical in here. Your morning line favorite, Mr. Dazzle. Mr. Dazzle's hit the board in his last two starts, and in his most recent start, he was beaten as the favorite. He was beaten as the favorite in his last two, but the horse that beat him last time out, St. Louis Guy, is no slouch. He was dropping out of five consecutive stakes appearances. He found the right spot, and he outfinished Mr. Dazzle, who earned a respectable 75 buyer's speed figure. Mr. Dazzle does have those competitive buyers. He is a horse that likes to run second, which is a problem, obviously, in a wager like the uh, jackpot pick five, but he just seems like a nice fit at this level, and you can almost count on him to always give an honest effort. The one rail splitter to me might be the most logical alternative. Now, this is a horse who came to the downs with some question marks regarding his form on dirt. His best races had come in Northern California on synthetic and on turf, but he won right off the bat at the downs, albeit over muddy going. And then most recently, he ran a solid third in the St. Louis Guy race. This is a horse that doesn't have a lot of early speed. I do like that he's able to save some ground, hopefully going in to the first of two turns on the inside. To me, those two seem like the most logical horses in the race. If you do want to add a price horse, consider the number three, G's Turn, who's going to be making his Downs debut off the claim after racing at Lone Star Park. This is a 10-time winner who did not have a great trip last time out uh, in a $5,000 race at Lone Star. Uh, it was a race won by the favorite, a horse with a lot of back class, a horse that was grade three placed as a two-year-old and looked to be finding his best form. G's turn again didn't have a great trip in that race. He does have arguably more tactical speed than the two favorites in here and is worth considering. Mr. Dazzle to me I think is the most likely winner but you might want to consider Rail Splitter and G's turn is an interesting price horse as well. Moving on to race number five, five and a half for longs. It's a $7,500 claiming race and I think that the number seven just seems like the horse to beat in here. Sing and Cry in Dubai's five to one on the morning line. This is a horse, though, that likes to win races. He's won 10 times in his career. He's won four of his last five, and he's going to be stepping up in class. And maybe this step up in class is going to be too much for him, but he was good last time out, showing tactical speed going three quarters of a mile and beating a next out winner. Now, going five and a half is a little sharp for Sing and Cry in Dubai. He might be more effective at distances like six, six and a half, but he's in exceptional form right now. He does have tactical speed, and he might be a little bit of a price simply because he's stepping up in class. If you're looking for horses dropping in class, there are a couple down towards the inside that are interesting. The one Yola, the two Big Tony, they both drop out of the one other than and the allowance ranks. Yola last time out got caught up in a big speed duel. It was a seven horse field and the top two finishers came from sixth and fifth at the pace call. Yola was involved in a very hard duel for the lead. The pace was very fast. The pace came apart and Yola paid the price. Yola breaking from the inside is likely on a send here, cutting back to five and a half furlongs, and his speed is dangerous as long as he doesn't get involved in another pace dispute, which is possible because the two Big Tony right next door to Yola also has big speed. And Big Tony last time out also was involved in a wild pace duel. He dueled with the odds on favorite, both of those horses got hurt by that duel. The odds on favored finished fourth. Big Tony finished fifth. The race was dominated by closers in that six horse field. The top two finishers came from last and next to last, respectively, at the pace call. Big Tony came into that last start on a three race winning streak. He's dangerous when he gets to the lead. Will Yola allow him the lead? 
that could be a bit problematic. How about a closer, perhaps, in this race, if you think this pace is going to be very fast? And there's a horse in here that's coming off a little bit uh, of a sharp effort, and that's Bud Light Larry. It doesn't look sharp on paper, but I thought it was an excellent performance, considering we hadn't seen him in two years. That's right. He was off for over two years. This is a 13-time winner who returned last time out, and he actually made a bid into the teeth of the pace before tiring in the stretch. It just looked like a good fitness builder in his first start off such a lengthy layoff, and now he's returning in only two weeks rest. I believe that means Bud Light Larry's feeling good right now. He does have back class. He gets a little bit of class relief. And if this pace is fast, Bud Light Larry, who's been very effective at five and a half in his career, can come with a late run at a price. I'm most interested in Sing and Cry in Dubai, Bud Light Larry, uh, the number six horse benefits from a pace duel, and the one and the two drop with speed. Often a potent angle in these class of races, but could be compromised by pace battles. Race number six is a highly anticipated race. It's the Manitoba Derby for three-year-olds going a mile and an eighth, and it's a $100,000 purse. To me, Pray for Peace's last race makes him a standout. That was in the Manitoba Derby trial on July the 11th. It was his first start at the Downs after running at Churchill Downs and giving some good efforts there, and he just blew that field away. He got a very nice trip, but he also ran hard. An 86 buyer speed figure. He now has to deal with an outside post position, but there's plenty of run going into the first uh, two turns, and I think this horse has benefited from distance. Early in his career, the prior connections were intent on keeping him at shorter distances. Pray for Peace got the mile last time out. He got it very well. His dam and second dam were horses that appreciated going longer. He's by Liam's map who wanted to go a little bit longer. I think Pray for Peace has found his niche in these longer distant races, and he's the horse to beat in the Manitoba Derby. Robertino Diodoro's horses must be respected. Whenever they come up here for stakes races, he has red knobs, he has Clancy's pistol, he has great escape. Great Escape was the beaten favorite in the Derby trial. I really liked him in that race off of a solid performance sprinting at Churchill Downs. Great Escape, however, just didn't really fire his best shot. He did make an early move into the teeth of that pace, and maybe he was just keyed up with blinkers on. It was his first race with blinkers. They come off immediately. I think the Adoro thought he was a bit keyed up in that race. I think they're going to try to be a little bit more patient with him. He's shown the tactical speed to do so. Perhaps the most interesting of the Adoro horses is the number one, Red Knobs, who was claimed for $50,000 for his most recent start at Churchill Downs. Now, the comment says hung. I think it's a little bit uncharitable. Yes, he was the beaten favorite. Yes, he had dead aim on the leader in the stretch, but he just got wired that day by a solid horse who was able to walk the dog on the lead. That horse went 24, 48, 113. Nice, easy fractions, and red knobs couldn't get him. The fact that Diodoro likes this horse for a race like the Manitoba Derby, and I'm assuming he was claimed with this race in mind, makes him interesting. He draws the inside post, and he was graded stakes placed as a two-year-old, so he has some back class. For me, Pray the Peace is the horse to beat in the Manitoba Derby. If you kind of want to single a horse like Pray for Peace, then maybe you can spread a bit in the final two legs. Race number seven is arguably the toughest race of this sequence. It's a $7,500 claiming race going seven and a half furlongs. I think the number one Moss Mischief's last race was very promising. I was very concerned about Moss Mischief's form coming back as an eight-year-old this season. His first three races just weren't very good, but his last race going a mile I thought was a lot better. He finished ahead of five of these common foes and he actually was involved in a multiple horse pace battle, put away those horses turning into the lane, opened up the lead and just got out finished. It was a much improved performance from Masamich who draws the inside post, has speed and should be forwardly placed throughout. There are a couple of other horses in this race that deserve consideration however. The number four Rydum being one of them. No uh, match for Mas Mischief last time out. He was part of that pace dispute. Moss Mischief was simply better than him. But Ryden was claimed out of that race by a barn that doesn't have a lot of opportunities, but does very well off the claim. Three for the last six with newly claimed runners and a positive return on investment of $2.28. Rydum is a horse that might be best when able to make the lead, and I think this time out, if Moss Mischief is more patiently ridden, and I think that could be the case because he has shown the ability to win from off the lead, maybe Rydum can try to get to the front, back down the fractions, have an easier trip, and sprint on home. Silver Luke Silver is the drop down that must be 
considered in this race. Now, this is a horse that's made his living running seconds and thirds, and that's not a great sign. But his first race at the Downs resulted in a victory, and I think he might have found a home here. His last race, the RJ Spears, there was a gate malfunction. That race was declared a non-wagering event, and he might have just simply been in too tough anyway. Uh, I think Silver Luke Silver uh, fits very well dropping back down in class, and he has the tactical speed to work out a trip. Five to two is light. You probably don't want him to beat you, though, if you have a price play somewhere else in this pick five. But I'm hoping Moss Mischief can get back into form. Uh, he just looks like uh, he can get the right kind of trip in race number seven. We'll conclude the sequence. Again, 515,000 plus carryover going into the pick five at the Downs on Monday. 20 cent base wager. Six furlongs is the finale. It's a $5,000. Now winners are two life. I'm looking for a price source, at least a price source on the morning line. The number five, Henri is in control is a Manitoba bred who will be stepping up to face open companies. And yes, he is stepping up to face open company, but I do wonder if this race represents a drop in class. Because last time out, he was in a $5,000 beaten race that was open to multiple race winners. The winner of that race came back, is now a six-time winner, and he has already beaten open foes in the non-winners of four life ranks. A very sharp horse, Henri, is in control. Face that day, that horse wired them uh, on a speed-favoring track. Henri is in control, has shown ability throughout his career against the Manitoba Reds, stakes place last last year, has hit the board in all three starts, and he is the only two-time winner in this field. I think he fits in a race that is lacking a standout, and he has a giant price on the board, and he does have some angles. He's a horse you might want to consider. The number eight outcome is a horse that's going to take a lot of money, simply because he's taking a huge drop in class. He was beaten by a horse named Not Afraid, uh, who went gate to wire that day, and came back to win his next start with a rock-solid 57 buyer speed figure. Simply put, outcome has been facing better horses in his most recent races, and this drop in class should serve him very, very well. He is going to be the favorite. I'm not sure how much I trust him, but he should be a contender based on the current form. You've got two horses that are sort of gatekeepers at this class level. They've been here for a while. Uh, the number seven, Ben Roy. The number 10, Bro Code. You could argue that Bro Code is a little bit more upside. Ben Roy is the horse I would rather have. He finished ahead of three of these horses last time out. It was an okay effort uh, going, uh, going the mile over a sloppy track. He just didn't break very well that day. And he was wired. He did come with a good run for second. He just has burned a lot of money in his career. He can win, but the question is, do you really want him at some sort of a shortish price, even in a bet like the uh, jackpot pick five? I'm really interested in unreason control, the number five. He must face open company. I think he's been facing some solid Manitoba breads, and outcome the number eight looks like the interesting drop down. Ben Roy uh, is a horse that you could consider perhaps on if you're using the uh, the ticket maker system, the B and C tickets along with bro code. It is a fun sequence on Monday night. It could be a very profitable sequence. 20 cent base bet at the downs. Mandatory, mandatory, mandatory payout. The carryover for the pick five, $515,000. Best of luck.